a nation of, by, and for we the people, and a nation where uh, in our schools we're encouraging creativity rather than discouraging it. Are we unintentionally killing off, well, killing off is the wrong phrase, but, you know, shutting down the possibility of uh, another Ben Franklin or another Thomas Edison emerging from our population. We're talking with Dr. Richard Silberstein. He is a, a Ph.D. in neuroscience, the founding director of the Brain Sciences Institute at Swinburne University in Melbourne, Australia, and the inventor, one of the, his lab, you know, a co-inventor of steady-state topography, one of the major brain imaging technologies these days that's used to find out what's going on inside the brain in real time as people are thinking, as they're observing, as they're pondering. And uh, our telephone number, 866-987-TOM, T-H-O-M. All, all our lines are slammed right now on that. Uh, we also have another, another number with a couple of empty lines. This is for our callers who are listening on the web or from outside the United States, 503-796-2324. And, of course, if you want to drop into our chat room, TomHartman.com will get you there. And, Richard, uh, uh, let's take some phone calls, and, right. unless there's a, any further point that you want to make. Uh -huh. I'm, you, you think we've we've done it? Okay, let's let's see what uh, what our listeners have to say about this. Rick, and uh, is it Pompano, Florida? Rick. Yeah. Hi, Tom. Uh, long time listener, first time caller, and it's a pleasure to uh, hear you guys on the air. Um, and just very interesting. Uh, yesterday morning, which would have been Sunday morning, I was watching one of the CBS shows. It's called Sunday Morning, and they did a whole segment on people that belong to Mensa. And they started talking about um, some of the characteristics of these people. Right. And and, and if I may interrupt you, Rich, sure, for our listeners who don't know what Mensa is, oh, Mensa is the, the organization of basically geniuses. You've got to have an IQ above, I think, 140 or something like that to get into it. Uh, I tried to get into it when I was a kid. I missed it by a half a dozen points. And ironically enough, I was the keynote speaker at the California Mensa's annual conference last year, which was a <laughs> great honor, actually. And, and they're, they're great people. Anyhow, as you were saying. Yeah, so, so anyways, Tom, they started talking about the characteristics of these people, and they started talking about characteristics of ADD people. And I'm just like thinking, wow, this is really interesting. These are the people that really think outside the box and are the creative type people. Where am I going with this? I have a 12-year-old son. He's a seventh grader. He takes advanced classes. And um, it's a real chore sometimes as far as the homework and the rigors of regular traditional classroom assignments. But this kid is so creative, and it's very frustrating as a parent. And the last thing I want to do is regulate his, his creativity. And this is a kid that still loves to take all different types of Legos, build them, modify them into things that can fly, that can do all of these various things. And I kind of relate it to what you guys are saying that, you know, if you put these kids in a regular traditional uh, learning situation and you kind of shut down their creativity, are you really doing the kid a real disservice as well as maybe putting these kids on me on medication? And I'm just going to, if I if I can, I'd like to hang up and listen to your response. Okay, great. Rick, thank you very much for the call. Um, Richard, uh, about a decade ago, after you know, a decade after I hypothesized that ADHD kids were actually hunters in a farmer's world, that their skill set was adapted to a hunting and gathering world, and uh, the skill set of people who grew up to become bookkeepers are adapted to an agricultural world, picking bugs off plants all day long. Uh, and this, by the way, has now been validated in peer-reviewed peer journals. I've been kind of yes, vindicated right. on that. That's right. And and um, we started a school in New Hampshire, a private school. It's called Hunter School, hunterschool.org, just for ADHD kids. Mm -hmm. And we're able to take kids, and the, the principal tool is, frankly, smaller classrooms. But it's also a more interactive style of teaching and letting them, you know, be, be more involved rather than taking medication. And it's, it's we're getting spectacular successes at Hunter School, and and you know if, if there are parents who are, it's a residential school. It's out in the woods. It's 130 acres up on a mountain on a 2,000 acre lake, and it's just absolutely beautiful. But uh, HunterSchool.org is the website. What are your thoughts about what a parent should do when confronted with the choice between a public school and medication, or if they don't have the resources for other alternatives? Um, right. I don't know how the situation is in Australia. Here, it's it's it can be very tough. 
very briefly, one of the important points to note is there are ways of learning and teaching which really suit uh, these sorts of children, the more creative individuals, the so-called ADD group. And it's very much active learning as opposed to passive learning, just sitting there taking the information and suits more, if you will, the, the, the sort of normal group, so to speak. Mm -hmm. But the, the, the people with ADAD, particularly the high creative individuals, really work superbly in an action environment where they're actually learning by doing. Right. Uh, and there's a whole school of education uh, called problem-based learning where you're given a problem and you're told solve it. And to solve that problem, you have to learn a whole series of things, but you do it on your own initiative. Mm. And that seems to suit them much, much better. That's interesting. Uh, it's, it's almost a variation on Socratic uh, technique. It is. Yeah. It is. Yeah. Uh, amazing. We'll continue our conversation. Dr. Richard Silverstein is here with us, one of the world's leading neuroscientists, founder of the uh, founder and director of the Brain Science Institutes at uh, Swinburne University in Melbourne, Australia, the, one of the co-inventors of steady state topography. And uh, we'll be right back. Uh, Hunterschool.org, by the way. Check that website out. You're going to love it. We'll be right back.